The General harbored United States military mission to Armenia in 1919 appeared as a bright light in the midst of a troublesome and uncertain period in the history of the Armenian people. By the end of World War I, most of the Armenians had been forced out of their ancient homeland and decimated through a genocide perpetrated by the young Turk government of the Ottoman Empire. In the Western world, there was universal sympathy for the Armenians, and this was particularly true in the United States. President Woodrow Wilson's plans for peace, commonly known as the 14 Points, gave hope and assurance to a war-torn world. In point number 12, he had specified that the non-Turkish nationalities of the Ottoman Empire were to receive a free and autonomous development. World War I had brought about the greatest devastation known to mankind. Bitter imperialistic rivalries caused the European powers to oppose territory, extending throughout the Middle East. Following the attempted genocide of the Armenians in Turkey, many Armenians joined the military ranks of the Allied powers. With the entry of the United States into the war in 1917, the fighting assumed the nature of a crusade to free oppressed peoples. National self-determination and democracy now seemed attainable goals. The Allied victory over Germany and Turkey at the end of 1918 gave the Armenians great expectations as they routed for the Paris Peace Conference. They appeared to have a good cause. They were a Christian people who had suffered great atrocities, and numerous pledges had been made by world regarding restitution and emancipation. The Armenians thought that they had a champion in President Woodrow Wilson. In May 1918, the surviving Armenians successfully established a small independent republic situated on the border between Turkey and Russia, once part of ancient Armenia. It was hoped that that republic would serve as the nucleus for a united independent Armenia with the inclusion of the Turkish Armenian provinces that had been a part of the Ottoman Empire. In the spring of 1919, the Republic of Armenia found itself in a desperate situation. As a result of the Turkish invasion, Armenia was deluged by refugees. Famine was rampant in the land. At the end of the World War, the British had occupied a strategic railway between Batum and Baku. That was a lifeline for relief supplies entering Armenia. The British, in August 1919, were preparing to withdraw their troops. This was an alarming situation in face of the possibility that the hostile Turkic neighbors would attempt to annihilate the remaining Armenians. Armenia was beset by growing Turkish nationalism. On September 9, 1919, the Turkish National Congress, meeting in Sivas under the presidency of Mustafa Kemal Pasha, declared themselves to be, quote, against all intermeddling or occupation of the Ottoman territory, in particular against every movement to establish an independent Armenia. Unknown to the rulers of the Ottoman Empire, the Allied powers had conspired during the war to dismember Turkey. These secret arrangements provided for a division of Anatolia between Russia, France, Great Britain, and Italy. Under President Woodrow Wilson's leadership, however, a system of protectorates known as mandates was conceived of and applied to former Ottoman territories in the Middle East. Various plans were being offered for Anatolia. Some wanted a single mandate over Turkey combining Turks and Armenians. Others, among them the Armenians, wanted a separate U.S. mandate over the Armenian provinces of the former Ottoman Empire. It was expected by France and Britain, as well as the Armenians, that the United States would assume the mandatory role over Armenia. At this crucial moment in Armenian history, Major General James G. Harvard was selected by Woodrow Wilson to head a mission of inquiry to Turkey and Armenia. General Harbord was an imposing figure. He had been General Pershing's chief of staff and was in line to be advanced to commanding officer 
if replacement for General Pershing had been necessary. Harvard, a man in his 50s, had been an army man all his adult life. He had headed the Philippine Constabulary and commanded Americans in France. While on duty in France, he had been widely decorated. He was a distinguished man of determination, a person of considerable influence and stature. On August 26, 1919, five days before Harvard started on his mission, Secretary of State Lansing had written the American ambassador to Great Britain, John Davis, quote, the deportation and massacres of the Armenians in 1915 and 1916 were principally to the desire of the young Turks to create a homogeneous Turkey. The pan-Turanism and pan-Islamic aspirations of the Turks still exist. The purpose of the mission was to investigate American interests and responsibilities in the Middle East. The mission was to explore the possibilities of the United States becoming a mandatory power, thereby accepting certain portions of the former Ottoman Empire as a protectorate. General Harbert arrived in Constantinople on the USS Martha Washington on September 1, 1919. Harvard was to remain in Turkey, Armenia, and the neighboring regions of the former Russian Empire until October 11th, a period of six weeks. His route took him through Constantinople, Adana, Aleppo, Mardin, Erzin, trip are presented without any editing or visual alteration. The film log reads as follows. Constantinople, Turkey, September 1st, 1919, with Major General James G. Harbord on the deck of the Martha Washington. Aliyuk, Turkey, September 8th, 1919. Major General Harbord and members of the mission visit the wheat fields during threshing season. Afyon Karahisar, Turkey, September 8, 1919. The town and surrounding terrain. Armenians and their priests welcoming Major General Harvard and the mission to the town of Afyon Khara Hisar. Olu Kishla, Turkey, September 9, 1919 about the town where warehouses of the American Committee for Relief in the Near East are located. Major General Harvard and Turkish officials and members of the mission after visiting an old Turkish mosque. Adana, Turkey. September 11, 1919. <laughs> The lemonade man dispenses his wares. Along the highway, we see the most primitive methods of transportation and travel. In the river Sihon, 
where they do the laundry and bathing, both man and beast. Martin, Turkey, September 13, 1919. Members of the Turkish Reception Committee who received Major General Harbord and the mission. Arabs from the town of Salak on the Mesopotamia Plains who came to Martin to welcome the mission. Turkish cavalry and infantry at drill. Diyarbakir, Turkey, September 15, 1919. Members of the mission leaving the city in cars, passing through the old gates. Bridge over the Devegeched River and native caravans camp nearby. Diyarbakir, Turkey, September 16, 1919, where the mission camped for the night at Camel's Pass on the Devegached River, a few miles from town. Members of the mission loading their cars and leaving. Harput, Turkey, September 17, 1919, the Siglik and Chalkadon Mountains south of the city. An old fort built in the rocks on a high hill. Major General Harbord and party leaving the town hall after a conference with Turkish and English officials. Among the natives in an ancient village built on the hillside. Mumurhan, Turkey, September 18, 1919. Members of the mission experiencing difficulties in traveling along the Euphrates. The cars have to be pushed through the deep sand and up steep banks. Perak, Turkey, September 18, 1919. Kurdish natives at work with a pile driver on a bridge over the Euphrates. Sevaz, Turkey, September 20, 1919. Turkish infantry and cavalry after a review by Major General Harbert. Sevaz, Turkey, September 22, 1919. Mission party and automobile on a mountain road traveling toward Erzincan. Passing through beautiful mountain scenery. Erzincan, Turkey, September 23, 1919. Major General Harbord is welcomed by military governor Ersrif Bey on arrival.
turned out to greet Major General Harbor. A sign on the street praising President Wilson's 12th point. Major General Harbord and Hussein Bey visit the Turkish orphanage. This institution is under the direction of the Turkish Red Cross with Bikar FND as head. Erzurum, Turkey, September 25, 1990. City and government officials and officers of the 12th Turkish Army await the arrival of Major General Harbord on the approach of the city. Arrival of the mission. Big celebration at the fairgrounds in honor of Major General Harbord's visit. Entertainment of all kinds in progress. Football game by officers of the 15th Turkish Army. Turkish wrestling match. Native dancers and musicians. Mission party visiting a famous old building built by the Seljuk Turks in the 12th century. Cars, Armenia, September 27, 1919. Parade of Armenian Soldiers. An old fort on the hill. Mission party leaving Armenian Governor's Chateau after the reception. Erevan, Armenia, September 29, 1919. Reception committee waiting to welcome the American mission to the capital city of the new Armenian Republic. Prime Minister A. Khatisian in center of group, wearing soft hat. Arrival of the American mission. Major General Harbour is introduced to the Prime Minister. Entering city, led by Shah Khatuni, Commandant of City Troops. Major General Harbord and Prime Minister Khatisian reviewing the Armenian soldiers in Erevan.
Erevan, Armenia, October 1st, 1990. Headquarters of the Armenian government. Major General Harbord and Prime Minister Hatissian arriving at government headquarters. Cabinet of the new Armenian government, sitting left to right. Avadik Sahakian, Minister of Agriculture. Alexander Khatissian, Prime Minister. General Christopher Araradian, Minister of War. Standing left to right, Nicole Akpalian, Minister of Education. Abraham Gulhandanian, Minister of Justice. Sarkis Araradian, Minister of Finance. Major General Harbord and Prister Khatissian on the ground of government headquarters. Leaving Aravan, the old Persian wall that surrounds the city. This wall was made famous in literature by Marier. On the Aravan Tiflis Road, the city of Aravan with Mount Ararat in the distance. Armenian refugees and a street beggar. Trabzon, Turkey, October 9, 1919. The American mission on board the USS Martha Washington, leaving for home. The city of Trabizon, on the shore of the Black Sea. Bosphorus Strait, October 11, 1919. Going through on the USS Martha Washington. The fort of Rumali Hisar, on the shore of the Bosphorus. nearing Constantinople. The visual coverage of the Harvard mission was fragmentary, but the final report submitted to the president was an impressive volume on the history, geography, and economy of the land. It was well-reasoned and documented. What the Signal Corps' motion picture did not cover was the abject destitution and total devastation of Armenian life. At the end of the investigation, General Harvard reported, Massacres and deportation were organized in the spring of 1915 indefinite system, the soldiers going from town to town. Mutilation, violation, torture and death have left their haunting memories in a hundred beautiful Armenian valleys, and the traveler in that region is seldom free from the evidence of this most colossal crime of all the ages. Nor did the United States Signal Corps film cover the upsurge of Turkish nationalism and the rivalry of the great powers. The fate of the Armenians was sealed by a trail of broken promises by the great powers and the nationalistic response of Mustafa Kemal Pasha to allied plans to limit Turkey to western Anatolia. The Armenians became victims of events beyond their control. In his final report, Major General Harbord seemed to prefer that a single mandatory power assume responsibility over a joint mandate to include the areas of Turkish Anatolia, Armenia, and Transcaucasia. Major General Harbord cautioned against a separate mandatory state for Armenia, as it might be a signal for new massacres of all Christians throughout the area. Harbord estimated that initially 59,000 troops of the mandatory power would be needed to maintain order in the territory. It was estimated that an initial sum of $88 million would be needed to administer the area. He projected an annual decrease of commitment both in material and manpower outlays over a five-year period. On October 6, 1919, Major General Harbord finished writing his recommendation to President Wilson with the words, quote, here is a man's job that the world says can be better done by America than by any other. America can afford the money. She has the men. No duty to her own people would suffer. 
her traditional policy of isolation did not keep her from successful participation in the Great War. Shall it be said that our country lacks the courage to take up new and difficult duties?" End quote. The withdrawal of the United States into so-called splendid isolation prevented the possibility of repatriating and rehabilitating the Armenian survivors or of creating a united independent Armenian state. Still, the records of the United States military mission to Armenia, headed by General Harvard, provide rich documentation and give us reason to speculate as to what may have been the political and geographic complexion of the Near East today had the United States accepted the mandate for Armenia. <laughs>